Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about the power of music. Music bridging the gap, literally. With us right now we have Vicki Kissinger. Thank you for being here, Vicki. You're quite welcome, Diane. It's great to be here. You are a voice and piano instructor and you've been doing this for 17 years. Tell us what you do with um, your music studio and then also with the Lancaster Conservatory of Music. With my private music studio, I uh, it encompasses students a conventional method, and I also have special needs students. Uh, as far as the Lancaster Conservatory of Music, right now I have all special needs students in there, and that's where we started. Okay. Just recently. Just recently. Yes. Okay. You were saying to me earlier, this path chose you, right? Oh, absolutely. How did that happen? I, I teach students, but I learn the most. Mm. I learned the most from the students. Okay. How do you go about teaching music to special needs students? Uh, to teach special needs students, you first have to understand the disability or disorder, or if it's a learning disability, whatever it is, you need to have a good understanding of it, study it, and talk with the parents. Make sure you learn a lot about the student. That's going to be the key to the success and for the process of, of learning. So having the parent actively involved really makes a difference in the process, right? It makes all the difference. The parent needs to be actively involved. They need to be there present for the lesson. For the first lesson, the parent, um, they will help guide me. Uh, for s er, a certain students, uh, especially within the realm of autism, I don't touch, I don't do anything. If, if I have to place my hand on theirs, I ask, and then we talk about that. And even if it's a, a student with visual impairment. So we start there, and parents, we talk before the lesson. So mm -hmm. I know uh, any triggers that would cause anxiety or very uh, uncomfortableness and anything like that that would you know, be detrimental to the lesson. So if we're, important. if we're talking about special needs students, what are we talking about? We're talking about students who have visual impairment, meaning blindness. Uh, we're talking about students within the autism spectrum, uh, pervasive developmental disorder, and that's the big umbrella, is okay. pervasive developmental disorder. Mm -hmm. And under that, you have the different forms of autism. You have Asperger's, and there's other different things. And then you have the intellectual disability, as most of us know it, as mental retardation. Okay. It has been trial and error, hasn't it? It has all been trial and error. <laughs> they don't teach this in school. So that's why if you educate yourself and really study and get to know about the disabilities and the disorders, you have a better understanding of what's going on and talking to that parent and learning about their son or daughter, mm -hmm. you get a better understanding. No one knows that student better than mom and dad or mm -hmm. the caregiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Patience, patience, patience is key. Patience is key and more patience is key and baby steps and perseverance. Mm. I tell people, I tell parents that um, there are going to be lessons that are just going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. It happens and that's what you have to let go. You can't expect that this child is just going to go off like a normal child and they're going to go do their 20 minutes of practice time or however long it is and practice and go off on their own and then they go about their activities. Mm -hmm. It's on their terms Yeah, many times. This goes against everything that you were taught, right? It absolutely <laughs> goes against everything I was taught as musicians were very disciplined, mm -hmm. we're very regimented, we learn our technical skills and our practice times, and, and that's the way music should be taught. Mm -hmm. But when you do this type of teaching, you have to let go of some of those things. You may not get that student with the perfect posture mm -hmm. and their feet touching the floor the way they're supposed to be for piano or for the singer to have their mm -hmm. shoulders back and, and the, the nice posture. Right. For some students, it just gon isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that you have to let go the perfect fingering, the using the right finger on the correct keys. It may happen. Right. I have a young man right now who uh, is a new student and his uh, disability is blind. 
he's doing very well, but he has no other disorders or anything else going on, so that's different. But for some, it just doesn't happen. That's not the goal. The goal is not to teach it, teach the student to be the perfect musician, our conventional mm -hmm. picture of a perfect musician. It's, it's to benefit them using their brain, mm -hmm. because music uses both hemispheres of the brain. It actively engages the brain all the way around, and it also focuses on their fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking MR, autism, and even blindness, those are qualities that are lacking mm -hmm. in those students. And parents have been very happy so far that the fine motor skills have gotten much better. This has really been successful. And you've learned along the way not to sweat the small stuff, right? No, no. I, I learned a long time ago to not sweat the small stuff and just let it go because mm -hmm. you can't fight a battle that you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. It's just, it makes no sense. Your goal has to be for the betterment of that child and, and to nurture and pull out any ability that they have. And that's where you want to go with it. And that's really how music can bridge that gap that is there. Music absolutely bridges that gap because I have some students who are not conversational, but they play. And they that's play their the voice. Piano. Yes, and the voice too. Mm -hmm. And that's how they express themselves. Yeah. It's the only way they can express themselves. And these kinds of things, unfortunately, they, they are not offered in, in the schools or they don't fit in well with the public school systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, the schools are very open and the IU is wonderful with working with these students, but they seem to fall between the cracks many times. And parents mm -hmm. will tell you that. They just kind of get forgotten. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing because it really has made a difference. We're going to put uh, your website up on the screen. What are we going to find there? On the website, you're going to find pictures of students. Okay. You're going to find uh, some bios, some videos of some recitals, mm -hmm. and a little bit of press information, how music works the brain and how music supposedly makes us smarter. <laughs> it doesn't increase an IQ, but it does get the brain actively engaged. Yeah. And that's what's good for all of us. Sure is. Well, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to have one of your students here. So stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about music, bridging the gap. We're with Vicki Kissinger. She is a music voice piano instructor. And we now have one of your students for 15 years, Sean Sikowski. Thanks for being here, Sean. You're welcome. I'm s and you've been with Vicki for 15 years. Right? Yes, of course. <laughs> She's great to work with, isn't she? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your condition. Well, I'm, I'm blind. I have aniridia which is the absence of the iris. Okay. And, and if you can see right here on my left eye, mm -hmm. this Peter's anomaly. You didn't grow it to its full okay. size. So and I also have autism, okay. high functioning or Asperger's syndrome. Okay. Now you started with Vicki 15 years ago and you started piano. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So tell me how that was. It, it was a little stressful. It was, because cause I couldn't tell, it's hard for me to play piano when I'm blind. Okay. And then when I found that out, I wanted to do singing. Okay. And that took it from there. Okay, so then you made the switch. So how long did you work with him on piano, Vicki? Probably about three or four years, okay. and that was really beneficial. He played very well, um, and with teaching him all the notes and mm -hmm. the pitches and everything, I discovered that Sean has absolute pitch, or perfect pitch as wow. we know it. Wow, that's wonderful. But you love, what types of things do you like singing, Sean? Different stuff, classic stuff, spirituals, Broadway stuff, stuff from like, pop stuff, I think uh, Christmas stuff, any stuff I can think of. I, I break out in the song anywhere. <laughs> All right, then we'll look for you anywhere, just we'll listen for you. So what is it like working with and teaching Sean voice? Sean is a great student and he follows direction really well. 
Uh, in the beginning, it took a long time to try to teach him the technical things that he needed to learn to develop the, the great voice that he has. So that was somewhat challenging because of the lack of the vision. Mm -hmm. So um, he picked it up very quickly. The other thing that we had to really work on was becoming the music and let the music come ah. within you and then expressing it. Mm -hmm. That was another challenge. And now he does it very well. Oh, that's excellent. Well, Sean, you have one of your favorite songs. What's one of your favorite songs that perhaps you could sing a verse from for us? Well, my favorite singer is Mariah Carey. Okay. My, it's, that's my all-time favorite singer. And one of my favorite songs from her is Hero. I can see a verse from her, that. I would love to hear that. Could you do that? Yes, of course. All right. There's a hero if you look inside your heart, you don't have to be afraid of what you are. There's an answer if you reach into your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you finally see the truth That a hero lies in you <sighs> That was beautiful. Thanks. That was really, really beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Yeah, welcome. yeah, I think everybody watching can really appreciate that. This must be such a blessing for you to work oh, with Sean and people like Sean. It is. It's a wonderful blessing. Yeah. That's why I learn so much. Do you see why he's such a dynamic singer? I, I love yeah, for I him do. to sing those classic. He sings Ave Maria. Oh. He sings just wonderfully. Yeah. Now you do some recitals, don't you, where we can actually attend? I yeah. do. Wow. Tell us when you do those. I do them in the spring. Uh, usually around May and again late November so I offer recitals twice a year for performance and every now and then we'll be asked to perform at some different venues. Okay and some of those venues are like the Ephrata, was a church in Ephrata? Well the Ephrata Church of the Brethren is where I'm an organist okay. there and uh, that's where I hold the recitals. Okay. And we just did something over Garden Spot Village a few weeks ago, okay. so that was our latest one. So you are available to do things at different places. Oh, absolutely. Good. Let's remember that. If we want to get a hold of Vicki, we can do that. Sean, I've got to ask you, how does it feel to you when you're singing? What does it feel like? Oh, it feels comforting. Yeah? Like a big hug. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Vicki's been my idol. Oh, well, she's, she's been a, a Pennsylvania senior, senior idol. idol, too. Yes. yes, I've heard her perform, and she's got a fantastic voice. So being able to work with her and to work on your vocal range and work on so many different dynamics yeah. has really opened up a lot for you, hasn't it, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought you're a performer now, right? Nobody thought. <laughs> well, Plus, I'm in a church choir. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh. At, at the St. John Center Lutheran Church. Okay, how often do you sing there? On Sundays, and I have choir rehearsal on Thursdays. So you get to use your voice every week in performance. Yes, yeah. well. church choir. Wow, that's exciting to be able to sing with others and then to blend too. Yeah. That's got to feel wonderful too. Yeah. Yeah. This is such a very cool experience. I'm so glad we're here and we're talking about the difference that music can make in bridging oh, the yes. gap and working with, with individuals with different needs. And being able, to, Vicki, I give you so much credit to be able to work outside the box. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. You do work outside the box. You, you really almost have to throw away, throw away 
all the conventional yep. things that you've been taught in, in formal yep. training. Thank you for doing that. Well, you're quite welcome. And thank it's you for being here, Sean, and thank you for performing for us. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It's been an honor. Thank you. Sim said my idol. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to take a brief pause and we're going to hear from a parent and find out more about this wonderful program. Stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. Music does bridge the gap. And Deb Burkholder, you're a parent of Ethan, who's now 24, who started when he was 12 with uh, Vicki. There's a real story here. How did you meet Vicki? How did you find out about this? Well, it was a little bit roundabout. Uh, one of Ethan's teachers from the IU, Peg Brown, uh, had noticed Ethan's abilities in music and his music teacher at his elementary school. And they felt it was something that we should pursue. It okay. would be a way for him to express himself. All right. uh, so Peg saw an article in the newspaper yeah. about Vicki Kissinger's studio. And we contacted her. And the rest from there is pretty much history. Okay. Um, we uh, started lessons. Um, Ethan has always had an ability to pick out tunes, to play mm -hmm. songs. But when he came to Vicky, he was playing with just one finger, um, picking out simple things like happy birthday or jingle bells or something on that nature. Uh, and we thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, little did we know what would be possible. Um, now, 12 years later, of course, after much perseverance, much um, effort um, to keep him motivated, which wasn't hard because music is a love for him. Yeah. Um, he is now able to play chords and melody. He wow. plays with two hands. Um, he has the memory of an elephant. Um, <laughs> once he learns a song, it is forever there. Mm -hmm. It can be a year later and he will still know exactly how to play that song, not having played it for wow. a year. Um, and his repertoire is just huge. Anything on the, um, he loves oldies, he loves country music, um, he loves Christmas music, all different kinds of music. Yeah. Um, so he, he can pretty much play anything that somebody requests if it's a very, um, knowable tune. Oh, wow. Now, during the lessons, um, mm -hmm. we try and keep building on that um, repertoire. Okay. So, Vicki will show him a new song, and he, you can see his mind working. He will literally sit there and figure out what he needs to do to play that song, and will, by the end of the lesson, mm -hmm. pretty much has the basic concept of the song. Mm. Um, that he can play through it and know um, what's what needs to be to make that song. It is a mystery to us quite how he does it. He doesn't read music. He is completely blind. Okay, so that's what. Yes, okay, he's completely blind, okay. um, and he's also autistic. Okay. Um, so he lives very much within his own world. Mm -hmm. um, so how he accomplishes what he does, we're not quite sure. He knows if he needs to play a black key or a white key. He knows uh, what key it's in. Um, we've had a situation, a little incident, where a student was singing prior to his lesson, and we went in and we said, would you like to play that song that that student was singing? He not only played it, but he played it in the exact key that she was singing in. Oh, wow. So it, it was just mind-boggling to us. Um, so Vicki's done wonders. Um, again, as I always say, Vicki says, don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> we don't. Ethan doesn't sit up straight. He doesn't necessarily put his hands, well, he mm -hmm. doesn't put his hands on the keys the way <laughs> a normal student right. would. Um, but he gets the message across. He does not practice. Mm -hmm. He does not have any interest in playing anywhere but at Vicki's studio. <laughs> oh, wow. So um, huh. he will play mm -hmm. other places, but that's not what motivates him. Okay. He looks forward every week to that 45 minute session of just being able to play and have that joy in his life. Yeah. And it's a real joy for us mm -hmm. to see him excel and have that special thing in his life. Yeah, Each student is so unique. So your approach yes. is unique too because yes. you develop a relationship and you learn how they learn. Exactly. And that's what takes time and that yes. takes patience and that's where the parents are instrumental in, in nurturing that mm -hmm. ability. So your part in this is really key, Deb. 
Well, there are times when we have to explain to Vicki, like, Vicki will understand that there's something going on because mm -hmm. the lesson maybe isn't going the way that it typically would. Right. And Ethan's had many transitions in his life as far as um, where he is with his disabilities and mm -hmm. with his conditions. Um, it could be a medication change. It could be that something we just don't know, uh, but we have to clue her in to those things that um, today might not be the best day to push for perfection. Mm -hmm. or, okay. And when I say perfection, uh, I use that term loosely. Loosely, okay. But um, mm -hmm. to, to push the margin, so to speak, to get him to his fullest potential. Um, and you just write those off and you say, next time will be better. Mm -hmm. and, and it typically is. Um, and I can say that um, it's one of the best things we've ever done mm -hmm. for him. Uh, it's a joy to see your child have success. Yeah. And that is hard with when you have a special needs child because those moments don't come that often. Mm -hmm. And this is just such a great way for us. I said, I, I don't think I'll ever get tired of sitting there and listening mm -hmm. to him and Vicki play. Yeah, so. It is a real joy and talking, you know, it's a team effort. And I also see where it's almost like a family because Vicki, you were saying that you've grown up you know, Ethan's grown up with you, and yes. the same with Sean. You've been with them for years, and it really is that that intimacy that you get to know each other so well. It is. It's, there's such a connectivity with all of this. What a difference you're making with this! Once again, we're going to put the websites up on the screen if you want to find out more about what Vicky does with uh, her music studio, also the Lancaster Conservatory of Music, and helping um, children and young adults. Uh, that have special needs, music really does bridge the gap and boy, it makes us all happy. I just see everybody beaming. <laughs> <laughs> I see you beaming. Thank you for sharing the story with Ethan. I really oh. appreciate that. Thank you for allowing us to share it with you. What a difference it's making and it was so wonderful to hear Sean perform it was, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And thank you so much for all that you do and thank you for You're being welcome. here today and sharing the story and all the good work you thank do. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. I'd like to say thank you to you, too, for joining us today. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, and remember, keep looking behind the lines, and you might be surprised what you find.